Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff here at RSA 2022. I'm here with Olvar Erlingson, Chief Architect for Lacework. Olvar, pleasure to be with you here today. Yeah, likewise. Great to be here with you, Shira. Oh, thank you. So Olvar, here we're at, here at the booth at Lacework. It looks great. I've seen tons of customers and clients, people coming to talk to all your folks here. So one of the things I wanted to ask you, as the change of security and the migration of security has been changing due to cloud migration, could you give some insight on that and how Lacework is approaching that? Yeah, I would say that the defining characteristic of the cloud is constant change everywhere. The, the cloud services themselves are changing all the time. People are deploying software that is changing. Many of our customers deploy new software versions every few hours. Uh, the software that they use to build that software is often open source and that in itself is changing. And then running an operation in the cloud is a notion of constant change as you horizontally scale out, as you vertically scale out. So the configuration and everything is changing. And so that one defining characteristic, constant churn, constant shifting and, and sort of creeping in various directions, uh, trying to keep on top of what technologies are out there. It's a completely new landscape for security professionals. It's like so far removed from the traditional business computing where you would have that closed walls around you and you could have a soft squeaky center with multiple layers of defenses guarding it. That world is pretty much just gone and really the world we live in is more difficult as a result of that. Oh, that's very true. And we see with all the changes, certainly with technology and because of COVID, you know, things have changed completely. And you're dealing with lots of trends and how companies have to ebb and flow and kind of move along with the movement of security. How has Lacework taken that? What are they doing? What are you guys doing to hit this head on? Yeah, I, I would say that we really do hit it head on. So our main defining characteristic, our secret sauce, our differentiator is that we're all about giving customers a sense of visibility and stability. So we let you see all of the things that you're using, all of the things that are happening in a way that makes sense to you as the customer, in a way that's specific to you, the customer, not in a way where we think in terms of like what bad things are happening in the world and so on requiring deep security knowledge, but rather how is your environment unique? What is it that makes it run and tick? And then we actually let you see if there are any security critical changes in that environment, giving you that sense of stability. We have your back. If there is something changing that you need to know about that is security relevant, we will let you know. And so that really gives our customers a peace of mind that they really can't get anywhere else. And, and that's because we are so focused on their operations, deeply understanding what they are doing and using our patented polygraph technology uh, to actually build out deep understanding of what they're doing in the cloud. Well, I certainly that's important. There's no one size fits all when it comes to security. Right. And if anyone says that, that's a big problem. <laughs> and I think one of the other big problems that you're actually solving is visibility. Organizations really need to know what their cybersecurity posture is, what their yes. risks are, what they're dealing with on a day to day basis and not just a single snapshot at one point in time, because as things are changing, they need to know as well. So kudos to you. I think that's great. Yeah. Uh, and on, on the notion of compliance and vulnerability and so on, the, the fact that we understand what's happening in your environment also allows us to prioritize and rank. So because not only do you need to know what's vulnerable, you also need to know which of those vulnerable things should you actually expand energy and go and fix. And, and there's always going to be more problems than you have uh, resources for. And as we head into sort of macroeconomic headwinds, that's going to be even more true. Uh, security budgets might not be cut but I don't think they're going to be growing all that fast if the economy is heading where we think it's heading. And so doing that prioritization, coupling compliance and uh, threat detection and vulnerability with an understanding of what's important to you and your company, uh, that's what really, I think, makes us different in those spaces. Even though there are lots of vendors here on this floor which could give you a vulnerability solution, we think ours is the best because we are coming at it from a basis of understanding your operations. Like, again, that's another problem that a lot of organizations have. They have a CISO who's in there saying, I have a hundred things I need to fix. Yeah. How do I prioritize it? Where do I spend my budgets? How can I actually get the right budget to fix what I really need? So that's again, another important thing that you're highlighting. So that's great. And here we're here at RSA. What have you seen here that's interesting? What have you just 
saw that you know is cutting edge that you think is so interesting, even that your company actually interplays with that you'd like to share with our audience as well? Well, uh, I think that one of the most interesting things is really how the economy is coming back. You can see that we have 20,000 people here. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that COVID is over and done with, but I think we're learning to live with it. And uh, the industry is back and forth. Last time I was at uh, RSA was actually in 2022. So, no, no, 20, 2002, sorry, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Yes. Things have changed just a little bit since so, then. So things have changed a little bit. So the industry has grown a lot. And uh, I would say that the comprehensive nature, like there are products in every single niche. And, and as you pointed out, like security is fractal. There is like an infinite sort of number of sides and issues that you might have to deal with. There seem to be product here for all possible combinations of those issues. But then again, having worked for 20 years at the sort of large companies trying to sort of defend software, both at, at Google and the security team and at Microsoft, you know, doing things like Windows XP Service Pack 2, I think that this industry really has not been serving their customers all that well. What I see is a lot of point solutions. There's a lot of dis discrete tools that you need security expertise to try to glue together, uh, a lot of overhead and engineering just to figure out how to use all of these tools together. And I think the proof's in the pudding. I, I think that the constant barrage of uh, severe exploits, uh, ransomware uh, successes and so on for the bad guys in the uh, customer base are a result of the industry not figuring out how to serve that customer base well. And uh, so, so that I think is reflected here. And I think that we're also starting to see a little bit with the cloud that people are trying to do something uh, different. So we certainly are. We're trying to change what security is for our customers. So it really becomes about agility and being able to have a stable platform to run and improve on. So your developers and your operators can be agile, can ch do changes without fear, knowing that the security team has their back. Excellent. I think agility, flexibility, able to move with the company and not being a stagnant thing where there's no movement. They're not able to move along just the security needs, but the organizational needs as well. Right. And I see over here you have a demo that you're showing uh, some of your clients. I Absolutely. thought there was, a, there was a screen with a bunch of topics here. I'd love to uh, yeah, take so, a look at them and see so, what they're doing. So what's on the screen here actually are uh, uh, IAC uh, offering. Uh, so we uh, acquired a, a small uh, IAC company called Soluble and are integrating that into the uh, offering at the moment. And then if we go sort of out here, uh, we uh, can see that, you know, this is sort of highlighting the, the different uh, functionalities that we have in our platform. Of course, there is compliance, as we talked about, those rules about what are the good things you should be doing, how far are you from best of breed, and uh, Again, there, we approach that from a point of view of understanding your operation. Sure, you're not going to be best of breed absolutely everywhere, but what are those critical places where you definitely need to step up your compliance game and, and get to that uh, top tier, use best practices. And uh, understanding zero day exposure is, is, is a really uh, sort of key differentiator for us. We were reporting on Log4j exploits at five in the morning, the day log 4 shell uh, was announced. And not because we had changed the product, not because our researchers or team, we, we were on the West Coast, we hadn't woken up yet, but our product really has that uh, innate ability to detect the bad guy's activities, whatever those are. We know the bad guys will be making changes to your environment, and because we deeply understand your environment and what stable means there, we can actually throw high and even critical alerts the very first time something bad happens. And we succeeded for the log for shell exploits uh, and in a way that I think was quite unique in the industry and uh, was like, of course, greatly appreciated by our uh, customers. Turned out that most of those early exploits were sort of researchers and others just feeling around, seeing how much was uh, sort of how much prevalence there was of this problem. So actually there wasn't a huge amount of risk from those early proddings, but they were there and we were reporting on them. And uh, on that front, like you might think that we report a lot. So we report all the time uh, for anything that's changing, but that's really where we've gotten things right. So most changes are in the details and they're irrelevant details. 
our customers are seeing uh, about one critical alert a day and only about 10 uh, medium and higher alerts. And those are the ones that we actually suggest that they pay full attention to uh, every single day. And, uh, and that's like totally reasonable. A single person can do that. And what's cool is that uh, those alerts are with full context about what, how your environment is created, how your company operates, and you don't necessarily need a lot of security expertise there. So it sort of gets into that talent gap that people keep talking about. Well, I think it's very important that, listen, we're doing the proactive approach as well. Yeah. Security used to be as like, what's going to happen if we get attacked? Okay, let's figure out how we are going to deal with the attack. Let's deal with it after. Let's be reactive. Yes. And certainly in the last number of years, organizations have said we have to be proactive and reactive. But the proactivity is even more important at this yes. point. And what you're highlighting, I think, is critical. There's so much information coming at organizations left and right. Pay attention to this. This is the most important. How were they able to decipher what really is the important thing? So I think that the way that you're laying it out, you're able to give over the information is very critical to organizations. So again, Lacework is doing an excellent job. Well, we're, we're certainly trying to, and we're trying to do that in a way that uh, sort of changes the approach and the relationship between the security team and the rest of the organization. One of the sort of uh, sad truths about this industry is that uh, it's not really a very happy industry. So uh, the employees using you know those hundreds of disparate security tools and so on in in our customers, they're not they don't have a great job. They're usually the guys that say no. They're usually the guys that have a lot of responsibility and very little power to actually change things to make their lives better. And uh, by focusing on what the company is trying to do and having the security team act as a safety net for the rest of the organization, we actually managed to make a healthier relationship. So, so every week for all of our customers, uh, our product is throwing alerts. Our platform is, is raising alerts that the security team catches and they're actually inadvertent and mistaken uh, changes uh, resulting from something the DevOps teams were doing. So, so the security team is now coming and asking, hey, did you really mean to do this? You know, we're seeing this. Was that something that you anticipated? The answer is no. Thanks for actually letting me know, like you caught it, you know. And so I think that figuring out how can we make those three, you know, people say DevSecOps all the time and so on. They're different people, they have different responsibilities, different incentives, but they all want to keep that plane flying in the cloud. So like that operation needs to keep running and figuring out how to make that be a, a shared mission that actually feels like teamwork. And that's one of the key sort of changes that we want to bring about with our platform. Well, I think that's digital transformation at its best. I talk a lot about that. You have organizations where each member or each kind of upper level is incentivized differently. Yes. Operations keep it going. The security team keep it secure. But they're literally butting heads left and right. How are we going to be able to keep things running, but also secure when we have to slow things down to do what we need to do? Absolutely. So again, you're really practicing what you preach. Make it work well get that digital transformation going, make people be incentivized in the same manner to work as a team, and that's the best security. So really great work here. And in terms of when you talk about cybersecurity, are there any pointers you want to give the audience about any small things that you find to be very important in the cybersecurity world? Uh, well, uh, uh, that, that's, that's, a, that's a broad question. Let me, let me think about that. Um, the, there's, there's three things that matter in uh, security and, and there's really only I mean you can slice and dice it in many ways but but here's one way that I think is very true so you need to do attack surface reduction you need to close the windows in your house and so on if you have too many windows open then like the bad guys are gonna win it's like it's untenable so you know I saw that very first hand so I was on the team that did you know Windows XP service pack 2 and and the big thing we changed we did a lot of like technology and so on but we turned on the firewall we closed the windows and, and so uh, on Windows, amusingly enough, but, but that was a huge change in the security posture of the world at the time. Now, but that's not going to get you all the way you need to go because you're still gonna have like doors and windows and so on that have allow things to come back and forth. And so you need identity, you need credentials, you need authorization, you basically need uh, some guards and policemen guarding the doors, figuring out who's coming in and out. And you need policies and rules to figure out how is that set correctly? And those two things are gonna get you to a reasonable place. 
and then you're going to have squatters. You're going to have, you know, somebody that's in your house and you don't realize how they got there and, and, and you need to deal with that. You need to figure out what they did and so on. So you need to have that third tier of incident response and, uh, you know, uh, forensics, uh, cleanup and so on. Now, in, in this whole security landscape, landscape, I would say that we haven't spent enough time in the new world of the cloud looking at the attack surface reduction. So because of what we started out talking about, everything is changing, everything is interconnected. You know, you're pulling in software from everywhere. We call it supply chain attacks and so on, but it's really, we never even looked to see how many windows were open there. And so, and trying to lock that down. Now there are uh, lots of different ways of trying to do that, uh, but I think in, in overall, we need to do a far better job. And so I'll give you an example. So this device is an incredibly powerful computer, uh, much more powerful than the computers that existed when I was working on Windows 20 years ago. It's very secure. Nobody here has had, had you know, real difficult problems with this device because it's fundamentally designed to have an extremely limited attack surface. Is it perfect? No, the NSO group or whoever will sell you for a million dollars a way to get into this phone, but it's a million dollars. It's not easy and it'll get only into this phone. So. That's where we can get to by focusing on locking things down and so on. The problem is that this required a new software architecture, new ways of delivering software through the app stores and so on. Uh, we have to do that for business computing. Uh, now, once we get to that place, then we can really focus on like zero trust, making sure that the guards are like letting the right people in and so on, and then collecting the evidence to do the forensics and the incident response when inevitably somebody gets through, something bad happens. But I'd say that, you know, start with attack surface reduction, figure out which of the vendors here are really gonna improve your posture. And by posture, I don't mean free of vulnerabilities because you'll never be free of vulnerabilities. And even if you were, there'd still be lots of holes. They just wouldn't be on the list of vulnerabilities. Uh, it's also like not being fully compliant because Full compliance still means you're just using the best practices that have been well documented, still has a lot of holes. So uh, so I'd say there, like, go and figure out attack surface reduction. And then once you feel you have a good handle on that, figure out uh, how you do identity and access management, how you do authorization, reducing privileges, and then make sure that those thing, two things together give you the evidence to do great uh, detection response uh, forensics, et cetera. 100%, you summed up security. <laughs> I think, listen, you have to know where your data sits, who has access to it, what your yes. attack surface is. So your summation of it was excellent. I loved your idea and your example of the phone. I think it really shows the audience of what they're dealing with yep. and the things they need to think about. Well, it's a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you to the audience for watching. And I hope you learned a lot about Laceworks, an amazing company that you should definitely be following. Thank you. Thank you.